What's up everyone? Welcome back. Fuller here and thanks very much for checking out the channel. In today's video we're going to continue our series on the Harmonix plugin where we're going to be talking about the Fusion Sampler. Today I'm going to show you how to make your own Fusion Sampler and use it to basically build your own sample instruments and record and sample the instruments you might have laying around to put them inside the Unreal Engine so you can use MIDI to trigger those notes. So let's jump on in. So today I'm going to be sampling my tongue drum here. Uh, pretty cool instruments. It's actually really cool for sampling because it's a quick attack and a nice round sound and uh, all that good stuff. So I'm going to show you how to do that and uh, we're going to basically use uh, audio samples of that inside the Unreal Engine to build our Fusion Sampler and we're going to play a MIDI file, the uh, Bumblebee MIDI file and uh, see how that turns out. So uh, let's get to it. So this tongue drum is a diatonic tongue drum in the key of C, and so you only have uh, the notes of C major, so you can't play anything bad, which is kind of cool. Um, kind of like a harmonica, a uh, diatonic harmonica. So uh, we've got C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then an octave C. And we're gonna sample those, and that works out great for what we're doing. Uh, and we're going to sample that and we're going to use Logic Pro to sample it. So I'm just going to record some real basics. I'm not going to spend much time on it. I just got one microphone. I'm going to record these sounds. I'm going to edit them in Logic Pro and uh, clean them up a little bit and then drag them into the Unreal Engine. We're going to find our best versions of each of these notes and we're going to cut them up and trim them down so that we have individual wave files of each individual note. Okay, so now that we've done that, and I'm pretty happy with the way it sounds. I'm going to import, first thing I'm gonna do, now also again, uh, if you haven't watched part one, go back and watch part one, and that'll catch up to where we are right now because we're gonna use the same meta sound that we started building with this bumblebee patch. And uh, you know, just some of the basic sounds here that we have, here's the piano again. So we're gonna actually replace this piano sound with our new tongue drum sample. So how are we gonna do that? All right, so a couple ways to do this, but I'm gonna show you what my preferred method. We're gonna right click and we're going to import the samples we just made. And I have them right here and I've labeled them A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then C2, which is the octave higher. And so here they are. And I've normalized these uh, for the most part. Some of the waves are a little bigger than the others just because of the frequency, the way notes at work. You know, the lower the frequency, the more body it's gonna have. So let's just listen to these. Nice. Like I said, they're a little noisy, but that's okay. We're gonna um, clean those up inside the MetaSound. We'll just put like a low, low uh, high pass filter on there, roll off some of that low end. Um, okay, so we have our wave files. Now, how are we gonna create the sampler? Here's what I wanna do. I wanna find this first note, which is C, and I'm gonna just right click on here, and you'll see here, create fusion patch. Now, you can select all these and create a fusion patch, but then it gets a little wonky and you gotta do a lot of cleanup. So I'm just gonna go create fusion patch, and uh, we're gonna call this tongue drum buller because that's my name, note name, K, and minimum note 67, actually let's go minimum note 60, maximum note 72, that's one octave. Uh, scale mapping, you can do a major scale, distribute the notes across the major scale, if you're just doing, uh, you know, if you're just using one sample. Now you can actually use just one sample and it'll stretch it out as much as it can, but we've got multiple samples, so we're gonna use these multiple samples so we'll have a little sweet spot. So here's the tongue drum I just created. This is the fusion sampler. If we open this, we will see that uh, all sorts of details here. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this um, because there's it's just like fine tuning and kind of complicated. I would encourage you to kind of go here and play around. You see here, there is a filter here um, that we can enable that is a, we can actually put a high pass filter on it right here, which is kind of cool. And we might actually do that. But uh, right now we have one note and uh, here's a bunch of information as well. You can make it unpitched if it's like drum samples or something like that so that it doesn't change the pitch 
on the keyboard so you'll get like a kick drum or whatever and you don't want the pitch and stuff like that. Um, all of this stuff, you can kind of spend some time playing around with that, but uh, I don't want to do that right now. I just want to show you how to build out the sample. All right, so we have the C note right now. And uh, FYI, the way MIDI works, I talked about this earlier, a middle C is 60. That is the integer number, note number for middle C, MIDI note. So 60 is C and there's 12 notes in the chromatic scale. So 12, 60 plus 12 is 72. So 72 would be an octave higher C, okay? So let me show you how this works. All right, we're gonna play this sample. The root note's really important because we're telling Unreal this root note is C. That is the middle C, that is the root note, okay? In this case, I think I'm actually one note below middle C, but we won't worry about that right now. Um, we are, we're gonna call that 60. And what you could do here is you could make the minimal note zero and the maximum note 127, and then this would stretch this sample out over the whole keyboard. But I don't wanna do that. I wanna make, uh, I wanna add some more notes. So let's add our other notes. Let's add D, E, F, G, A, B, and then the other C. So we're gonna go here. Um, we'll go tongue, drum, uh, what's the next note? D, then we're gonna go tongue, drum, E, and right now we're just adding the samples I just recorded. And we're adding them uh, diatonically in the order of the scale, F, G, and if you don't know a lot about music, that's okay. You can kind of maybe Google this stuff, but I'm just basically building, so we got C, D, E, F, Oh, I skipped, I, I did F twice. Okay, so we'll go G, A, uh, where were you at? A, A, B, and then back to the octave C2. So what you have in the diatonic scale is just starting on C, it goes alphabetical, C, D, E, F, G, and then it starts back over A, B, till you get back to C. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and it keeps repeating octaves. In between those notes are la, the uh, chroma, uh, the uh, what do you call it uh, accidental notes, and those are like C sharp, D sharp. But we're not going to worry about those for now. We got C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. Now we're going to sign these root notes. Otherwise, it's going to get really wacky. So the root note for D is 62 because it's two notes above C. The root note for E is 64. Root note for F is 65, because uh, E to F is a half step, just some music, basic music theory. Um, six, uh, G is 67, A is 69, B is 71, and then C is 72. There is also, uh, the distance between B and C is also a half step, so that's uh, 70. So, we, so here's your notes, just for reference in the key of C. You've got 60, 62, 64, 65, 67, 69, 71, and 72. These are the MIDI note numbers from C to C in a diatonic C major scale. Now, don't get bogged down with that. That's just music theory. If you don't know that, just skip that part. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to assign the minimum maximum note. For D, I want to go... All right, let's start for C. So since our C is our lowest sample, every note under C, I'm going to stretch this out. So let's go down two octaves to... Uh, what do we got? Uh, one octave would be 48. Let's go down one more octave, 36. So 36 would be like a low C note, probably around here. So any anything from C... All the way to C, we're gonna play the same sample, we're just gonna stretch it out. But the maximum note is gonna be, we'll, we'll say the maximum note is gonna be 60. Then what we're gonna do here for D, we're gonna play the minimum note 61, the root note is 62, and the max note is 63. Over here, we're gonna go minimum note 64, max note 65. So what we're doing is we're basically, because these samples are all so close, we're just stretching them one half step. That way, if you play a D, you actually get a D sample. If you play an E, you actually get an E sample. If you play an F, we're actually gonna, uh, let's keep that on 64. We're actually gonna use the F sample, 65. If you play a F sharp, we'll stretch F to a F sharp, which is 66. We'll go G gets a 67 minimal note, and then G sharp is gonna be 68, stretch up the G. And then um, 69 is A, oops, 69 is A. If you play an A sharp, we'll stretch that up to 70. B is 71, 
if you play, and that's all we're gonna do, we don't need to stretch that, because if you play a C here, it's gonna be C. And then uh, we'll stretch, now our highest note, C2, we're gonna stretch that up a couple octaves too, because we'll have notes above that, but we don't have samples for that. Now if we sampled the whole keyboard, we could literally have a new sample for each note, which would be, which would sound awesome. So let's go up an octave to 84, and one more octave, 96, because remember, you want an octave, just add 12. Okay, so here we go. We've got our notes assigned uh, C all the way to C2. We're gonna save this, and we're not gonna really mess with anything else because I'm pretty happy with that. We're gonna close this out, and now the moment of truth. Now let's see if this Fusion sampler works. So we've already got our sampler in the engine, and uh, we're going to select our Fusion sampler patch, which is, there it is, Tongue Drum Fuller. I'm nervous. Let's see if this works. Okay, so when I hit play, we should hear our tongue drum samples playing Flight of the Bumblebee. And here we go. Let's check it out. Fingers crossed. Yes. Pretty awesome. Oh, there's the low notes. Now those low notes are the C note sample getting stretched. You can actually hear how good the stretching algorithm is. That's actually really good uh, pitch stretching. Let's try that um, filter. So you can hear, you hear the the low kind of ceiling fan, because I'm a tool. Um, so let's go in here and let's test out this uh, EQ filter and see if this bad boy works. Let's go filter is enabled. We're gonna go high pass filter. We're gonna cut it off at around, yeah, let's cut it off at around 550. Um, let's go Q of about 1.4 and then let's go negative 12 decibels on the filter and let's see if that does it. Yeah, it works perfectly. So we filtered out the fan noise. Now the low notes, we lose a little bit on the low notes. So let's tweak that. That's a pretty generous high pass filter. Let's go uh, 350. So we'll hear a little bit of the fan, but we'll get more of the low notes. A little bit of the fan. So there we go, so we got the low notes. Now, if you sample this correctly, and you get no noise in your room, and you don't have your ceiling fan on, and or you use Isotope or some sort of noise reduction plugin, you can get uh, really high fidelity samples. Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty amazing. So there you go, and now you can do all of the other things to it, because we have it as MIDI now, so let's slow it down. There's our tongue drum samples. This is great. Uh, samples sound awesome. And we're tran- we're, uh, that- so these high notes you hear are actually, those are the, um, samples getting pitched up. This is a very extreme MIDI file too. This is like a chromatic MIDI file of like four octaves, maybe five octaves. So this is really pushing the limits of what sampling should be able to do, but Unreal actually handles it really well. Um, let's bring this back up to tempo. Um, if I had another MIDI file, I could play, I don't have it right now in this session, but I could play something that was more like a tongue drum. Actually, um, you know what, in our next video, here's what I'm gonna do. In our next video, I'm gonna talk about the step sequencer, and we'll use the step sequencer to trigger uh, some tongue drum patterns, and so that'll be uh, in video part three, because I'm gonna talk about the step sequencer anyway. So anyways, that kind of wraps up uh, the Fusion sampler. Hopefully, hopefully this tutorial was really enlightening to you, and hopefully you'll be inspired to go create your own sampler now, maybe record a guitar or some percussion around your house or whatever you wanna do. You see how easy it is to make your own Fusion sampler patch and use that to play MIDI inside the Unreal Engine using the Harmonix plugin. Just a reminder, you can only get this plugin in if you're in Unreal 5.4, uh, and you have to make sure you install it uh, from the menu, uh, which is uh, just right over here under um, Edit, Plugins, go to there, and then you can find the Harmonix plugin, and you can install that, and then restart your engine, and you'll be good to go. I already did that in video one. Again, reminder, please like and subscribe if this video was helpful. 
feel free to leave a comment as well uh, so we can build community here. And I hope to see you in part three of the Harmonix plugin walkthrough video. Have a great one and we'll see you soon.